Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's lecture on the topic of casts in urine and their significance in renal disorders. It is important for us to have a comprehensive understanding of the different types of casts found in urine and their associations with specific renal conditions. Urinary casts are cylindrical structures that are formed within the renal tubules and are subsequently flushed out with urine. They are composed of various materials, including cellular debris, proteinaceous material, and other substances that can indicate underlying kidney pathology. The presence and composition of casts can provide valuable diagnostic information in the evaluation of renal disorders. Let's discuss the specific types of casts and their corresponding clinical implications. First, red blood cell casts. Indicative of glomerulonephritis, specifically the nephritic type. Glomerulonephritis involves inflammation of the glomeruli, which are the filtering units of the kidney. Second, white blood cell casts. Suggestive of acute interstitial nephritis or acute pyelonephritis. Acute interstitial nephritis involves inflammation of the kidney's interstitial tissue, whereas acute pyelonephritis is a bacterial infection of the kidney. WBC casts can also be observed in cases of transplant rejection. Third, granular, muddy brown, casts. Associated with acute tubular necrosis it is characterized by damage to the kidney tubules, which can be caused by ischemia, toxins, or severe infections. The granular appearance is due to the breakdown of cellular debris within the tubules. Fourth, fatty casts. Found in nephrotic syndrome. Fatty casts exhibit a characteristic appearance known as the Maltese cross under polarized light microscopy. Fifth, waxy casts. Associated with end-stage renal disease and represents the advanced stage of chronic kidney disease. The waxy appearance indicates advanced tubular degeneration and atrophy. Sixth, hyaline casts. Considered nonspecific and can be observed in various conditions. Commonly found in situations such as dehydration, intense exercise, or diuretic use. Composed of tamhorsful mucoprotein, uromodulin, secreted by renal tubular cells. Seventh, broadcasts. Linked to advanced chronic kidney disease. Broadcasts are wider than other casts and form in large, dilated tubules with reduced flow. They suggest significant tubular damage and impaired kidney function. Lastly, tubular epithelial cell casts. Contain desquamated renal tubular epithelial cells. Observed in conditions such as acute tubular necrosis, acute interstitial nephritis and proliferative glomerulonephritis. Indicates tubular injury or inflammation. It is important to acknowledge that the interpretation of urinary casts has limitations, including their absence in some cases, nonspecificity, sampling variability, limited diagnostic value in chronic conditions, and inter-observer variability. These factors emphasize the importance of considering casts as part of a comprehensive diagnostic approach. That includes clinical correlation, additional laboratory tests, imaging studies, and a thorough patient history for accurate evaluation of renal disorders. Thank you for your participation in today's lecture.